so it probably wouldn't have been um, something homespun. It was something that they were able to buy. Um, so it's probably someone who had been here a while and established and uh, maybe had some family back home that had some money and was able to send some nice cloth. So anyways, we're going to talk more into early settlement in Ohio, and we're going to focus mainly on Marietta, Ohio today. When the Ohio Company of Associates set out to settle Ohio, the land they purchased in the Northwest Territory, was a chunk of land in Southeast Ohio. It was along the Ohio River and the major town that they created here was Marietta. Yes, I did say Northwest Territory and that's because Ohio is not a state yet. We didn't see that achieve that status until 1803 and it's not that time yet. It's 1786, when General Rufus Putnam and Brigadier General Benjamin Tupper of Massachusetts started a real estate company, kind of a pivot from the war to start a real estate company. Um, they started the Ohio Company of Associates and they bought 1,500,000 acres of land in Ohio for $1 million. That's like less than a dollar an acre. That's pretty good. Uh, especially even by today's standards. They had to set aside about 100,000 acres for um, a different kind of settlement. Uh, the rest of it they could sell to anyone that they wanted to, but the U.S. government said, hey, if you're going to purchase all this land in the Northwest Territory, you need to set aside around 100,000 acres for uh, we want to put families in Ohio. And specifically, they wanted to make available um, for any white male to be able to have 100 acres free for themselves. So this was kind of up for, up for grabs. So that meant that they, they could give out that 100,000 acres and 100 acre plots. This kind of drew a lot of people in and more people wanted to come settle Ohio. Not surprisingly, who wouldn't if they're getting 100 free acres? I would still sign up for 100 free acres. I will say, I'm not so sure if this garb was super comfortable back then. He had some adjustments. I'm having a little trouble with the acre. Uh, they established Ohio's first town in 1788 along the Ohio River, and they called it Marietta, in honor of the French queen Marie Antoinette. Now, why would we name a town after Marie Antoinette and the French when it was uh, more American? And we have, you know, our main background is um, English. Well, see, we had just fought the American Revolution and kicked the British out and decided to become the United States of America. Well, we didn't do that on our own. We needed some help from France. And they supplied a lot of money and troops and ships to help us um, win this war. They didn't do that all out of the goodness of their own heart though. Remember, we just fought the French and Indian War, which was the British against the French. Well, the French just couldn't wait to get back to Great Britain. And they were kind of hoping that America would fall on its face and we would uh, kind of need the French so we could, of this whole territory, be kind of up for French grabs. That didn't work out though, and we wound up winning the American Revolution, and we were staying in a country at this time. So with the help of the French, we were able to establish this area, and they thought it would be really nice to name the town Marietta after Queen Marie Antoinette. Shortly after this, they created a fort called Campus Marshes, which is a museum today. You can go visit it. It's got a lot of cool things. It provided protection and it was also the land office for the Ohio Company of Associates. It's different than the Ohio Land Company as we learned earlier, right? This allowed many more settlers from New England and European uh, immigrants seeking religious freedom 
to come to Ohio, oh, to come to the Ohio wilderness. See, at this time, um, Ohio was kind of wild. But the appeal of owning their own land, especially this 400 acres, um, brought a lot of pioneers to Ohio despite the dangers and hardships. Much of Ohio at this time was forested, so that it was very difficult to get around, especially wearing this kind of garb. I would have preferred some trousers and some hiking boots to be going through the woods. And it's filled with all sorts of animals, plentiful deer, turkey, and fish, and other fur-bearing animals for fur trappers, so that was nice, but there's also lots of coyotes and bears. Not so nice, you don't wanna run into one of those, right? There were no houses, and markets waiting for them. So it's not like there was a house, you were just moved to Ohio and there was a house built for you already. Uh, there was woods. And if you wanted a house, you had to build it yourself with your own two hands. You had to go cut down all the trees and then you'd have to you know, pick them up and lay them on top of each other. And most of the first houses here were log cabins where they just take the actual tree trunk and they stack them on top of each other and they fill them with uh, some stuff to keep out the, the weather. Uh, but that, that took a lot of work. So these people were not um, just sitting back for an easy vacation. And it wasn't an easy life they were signing up for. And they had to find ways to get along with the Native Americans already living here. So there was a lot going on here in Marietta, Ohio, and branching up off the uh, Ohio River into the uh, Ohio wilderness. And I hope you tune in again next time for Rambling Roxy's Adventures Through History, and we can find out more about some American settlements in Ohio.